Uh, tonight I'm going to show you how I painted this particular design. Another easy design that anyone should be able to paint that's a beginner painter. And I am just going to, for the purpose of this video tonight, just be doing it on a piece of watercolor paper. I know that sounds odd, but um, that's what I have available to me right now. Um, instead of doing it on a uh, small canvas, I'm just going to do it on that tonight. I will be using the number 8 round brush by Princeton, the Heritage Series. Number 16 round brush also by Princeton Heritage Series. And then the number 4 round brush by Princeton. My small little flat brush, which again I'm not quite sure what number it is, but it's it's small, like maybe a 2. And then the, the fingernail line brush, which is the Bostonian fine liner. Paints I will be using Folk Art Enamels. Wicker White, Folk Art Enamels Crushed Coral, Folk Art Enamels Autumn Leaf, and then this is Multi-Surface Folk Art Copper, also Multi-Surface Moon Yellow, Multi-Surface Citrus Green, and then Multi-Surface Real Brown. Alright, so I will be using the number 16 round brush for the creation of the petals for the flowers. And I'm just going to start with the the fall or I'm sorry, autumn leaves, and I'm just going to base coat each one of the um, the leaves for the each flower. Now these petals, you can either be, once again, a five or a six petal flower. That's up to you. And you know, it kind of just depends on when I'm painting them, what I can fit in at the time. So this is a bigger, bigger flower right here. So I'm just going to do it like that. Just keep turning my paper as I'm creating the flower. You can kind of leave a little bit of an opening for the center of the flower if you want. And then I'm just going to keep doing the creation around. And again, this design that I'm creating right now will be similar, not identical. If you're new to my channel and you like my floral paintings, please give me a big thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit that bell, which is a notification bell. That will let you know whenever I post something new, which I am working on creating more videos, um, trying to be more active on my channel. So any help I can get that would encourage growth for my channel would be much appreciated. I think it's fun. These are meant to be simple, meant to be something that just about anybody can paint. If you're an experienced painter and just want to use this as an idea for a design, feel free to do so. If you're an experienced painter and you want to, of course, put your own touch to it, give it a little twist that you would typically do when you're painting, that's perfectly fine. More power to you. I welcome that. I would love to see designs that anybody's painting when they've painted something that I've I've um, demonstrated. That would I would love to see. Um, please feel free to share. Again, you know my my paintings are meant to be simple. They're not to be made meant to be difficult. Because I do want people to be able to do them, give them encouragement if they're new to painting. I don't you know some people I follow on YouTube, some of their stuff is just so difficult that I really don't think I'll ever get it. You know, get what they're doing or understand how they know to do what it is they're doing. That's that's a 
piece for me too. It's like, well, how do you know to do that next? Or how do you know to put that there or that layer, that type of thing? I just try to make them as easy as can be. Now on this next part, I'm just going to start layering some other color on. This is the copper. And you don't have to cover like the full the full petal. Um, just put you know put some other additional color. Just you know sporadically. It can be, you know, if you want it to be more like it's planned out, that's fine too. If you want it to be where it's you know on one side or one part of the petal, that's fine as well. It's just meant to give it some more definition. Um, maybe even separate the petals a little bit more if you're overlapping so you can see that. You know, because I do at some point here overlap petals like right here. This one is touching this particular part of the flower. This one's overlapping that one. So you get the gist. You know, I'm just trying to add some more color to the petals. Right now I'm just just quickly putting the copper over it. This one I kind of lost the shape a little bit. I'll put a more of a point to it. And the copper is a little difficult to see, but just fine. I'll put some over here, and I just keep turning it and adding color. And I can go from the outside part of the petal to the inside part of the petal. It doesn't really matter. Whichever direction you want to want to go with it is fine. And you can blend it if you want it to be more of a blended look. That's fine too. And this one, like I said, I'm just kind of putting it on here as I can. And then I'm going to grab some of that coral that I mentioned. Just kind of fill it in too. Just kind of go over it. And again, it doesn't have to be blended really well at this point. You're just going to keep working it. We're not done by any means, any stretch of the imagination. On this part, and I'm not washing my brush in between either, just so that you are aware of that as well. Letting that go right there. And then coming over here and doing the same thing. Doing the same right here. I guess you could spend more time blending and all that if you want. This to me is just an easy way of giving some definition to your painting just very quickly. I, I am going to go over this a little bit more, so don't be worried. This isn't the end. It's just the beginning. That's a little shiny, so it might be hard to see too. I'm hoping I'm staying on the the page here, hopefully. That's why I say you can come up, you know, come up the side, or if you want to stay towards the center of the flower and just look like you're adding some color that way, you can do that too. Or do the top part and have the top and the bottom meet. Yeah, that's fine as well. I'm just going to go back over it and throw some more copper in. Again, it's just a quick, quick little dose of copper. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. I do also try to, whoops, I'm going for the wrong color here. Do also try to put my 
information in the descriptions below the videos as far as what materials I used. Uh, you might want to check there if you have any questions first and see if I've already answered it there. So how do you think I'm going to finish the centers? If you want to give me, see what you think, leave that below too. See how I'm going to finish the centers. I actually ordered some new scruffy brushes, but they haven't come in yet, so I'm so excited because if you follow my videos, you know that I've been using some dinosaur ones that have been around since the beginning of time and I've actually placed an order and should be getting them tomorrow so I'm pretty excited about that alright so in this next part I'm just going to come in here with some of the orange which is the initial color it's the autumn leaves and then just kind of go over it a little bit maybe blend a little bit with that you can see hopefully and then just take my brush lightly, just kind of go over it with that. You know, I'm not getting rid of the colors per se that I've already put on here. It's just kind of blending them with the original color. And like I said, and if you feel like you've lost too much of, of the contrast, go ahead and put some more back in. It's not a problem. I said, and make these your own. I'd love to see your work. I can't stress that enough. I'd love to see what everybody does with my designs if they attempt them. Eventually, I'm going to get brave and start doing lives, but I haven't gotten to that point yet. I think I need to get better at it first. I'm just working on so many things and trying so many things that Right now, it's just kind of hard. All right, I think I'm pretty much to where I want to be. I think I can pretty much tell where my other leaves begin when they're overlapping. And that's the main thing. You just want to be able to see it. If you're overlapping, you don't want it to be so blended in that you can't tell that it's actually overlapping. You want to be able to tell that where one petal starts and one petal stops. That's the whole point of doing this. Plus to give it some depth, too. All right, I think we're, this one looks a little spotty. Guess a comment below how you think I'm going to finish the centers. I'd like to hear, hear your thoughts. The next part that I'm going to do is put in some leaves. And I would do it with a bigger brush. I could do it with a bigger brush. But I think I'm just going to use um, the number eight flat brush, or not flat brush, round brush. I'm going to be using the citrus green and the real brown, kind of mixing them together just to get more of a olive tone to the leaves if possible. Not a true, not a true green, just a more of a kind of an olive, like I said, an olive shade possible here and with these flat these leaves I'm just going to lay the brush down and pull it up lay the brush down and pull it up simple not anything crazy as far as the leaves go this is it basic leaf pattern this is it it's not really a one stroke thing it's just a basic leaf and I'm just going to go around and put them in wherever I think I can fit them. They can be single, um, double, triple, whatever, whatever you think works. It can be a partial petal. It doesn't have to be, they don't all have to be the same size either. 
just basically laying the flat brush down and pulling and down and pulling. If you didn't get good coverage, you can go back over it again and then just, just keep doing that. If you see in the center here a place where you can stick one, go for it. And I kind of like to have it to where it's not completely open in the middle with, with white spots. And like this one. And just know anytime you're doing wet on wet, you can end up pulling in some color from the bait, the bottom part of what you're what you are designing. It's like a little bit of the orange. I'm trying to tip this so hopefully I didn't put any water on it, but I'm trying to keep it just really nice and thin. Going in like this. It's nice and thin. It's a little fine to connect to the flower. This works much easier with watercolor, I can tell you that. Oh, you know what? Let me try it with a smaller brush. I think that's one reason I grabbed it. Let's see if I can do it better with the smaller one. And you on this can actually go from the flower to the leaf if you want. The ones that are already kind of connected like that, I'm probably not going to really get a good uh, connection to the flower like that because they're so close. I keep running that through the, the paint. Alright, so I'm going to go like this, like that. Again, they're just meant to be very, very thin. And I was actually putting some water on my brush before when I did my sample. I try to get them thin. I just don't want it to be too thick. And then what I did, whoops, I finished. Then what I did over here was, well, here I can go like that. But I think I'm just going to take it like it's, like it's going in here. That's fine. Some of these are kind of not completely closed on the sides, which it's, that's okay. And if you want, I mean, you can go over these a little bit with another color. If you want to add some, add some color to them, that's fine too. Just quickly brush in some other color. This is just a, a different shade. That's all it is. But it's not really that far off. And what's already out here. And I didn't really run these, this stem kind of deal up into the leaf. I didn't really run it up in there like I would if I was painting more like the one stroke. Oh, I get picking that paint off. I don't want to do that. All right, so that's basically basic I wanted the leaves to be like I said they're not not one stroke leaves or anything special like that what I then want to do is go with the green this is the just the green without any kind of um, additive the citrus green and then just pull out these And if they don't paint out nicely as far as they look a little dry, just go back over them. You can overlap. You can actually add some of the other color into it, uh, which is fine. Give it more of the olive look that you're going over it. And you can actually even put some little flowers coming down here if you wanted to. I'm not going to. I'm just going to leave it like this. It's just meant to be just a little spray. All right, and then I'm going to turn it and do another one over in here and then just come out, come out from it. I guess if you can overlap, you can go back and put some of the more of the olivey looking color in it.
And I'm just going to do another little spray, I think, right in here. And you can make them wavy if you want. It doesn't have to be straight. Again, it can run over the top of the flower, and that's pulling some of the color from the flower. That's fine. But if you don't like it, then you might want to dry yours a little bit before you do that. So if it doesn't bother you any, then more power to you. Go for it. All right. So I'm going to leave it like that. And then, I don't know if you've decided what colors I'm going to do the, the centers with. If you told, could tell from my other sample. But I am going to stick with the yellow and the brown. Go in with my, my small little flat brush. And I am going to be tapping these in again. I did this on a sample the other night. I really like this type of a center. Hopefully it'll be even neater when I get my get my scruffy brushes. But I do like this look. I'm trying not to stick my hands in this. Another thing I always try to mention too is that I am a left-handed person. However, how I start my my leaves or um, strokes of any sort, you, if you're a right-handed person, may need to start from the opposite direction. Just so you know, and you might find that that's easier. Left-handed people tend to do things, as most of the world will say, backwards. I say it's the right way, but, um, you know, kind of have to go with what the rest of the world thinks we should be doing, I guess. Now this one I have a little bit more of a gap, which I'm going to try to make. It'll make my center bigger. That's fine. I don't have a problem with that. But I'm just basically keeping this up on the the bristles straight and then tapping. I'm going to go back in and put some more brown here. And tap. Because not all the flowers are the same size as you can see. And this one will probably be a little bit bigger too. If you don't want to have big centers then I would say make sure you don't have that big of a gap inside the center of your flower. But if it doesn't bother you, it's fine. I guess I just love, love these kind of centers. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Do you like these? Is this what you figured I would do? I think it shows up nicely with the color of these flowers. And then I'm going to do the last one here. And let's see here. Let me just do it more like this. And it's going to be a big one too because of how big my opening was. And I can make it a little bit smaller. I guess that it doesn't bother me. But it's fine. So I still have one more one more part to add, which will take care of any any big holes that, the, that are seen in between here. I'm just tap and tap 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 in. Okay? All right, so there we have that part of it so far. And I just have one last thing I want to do. Let's take my fine liner. I'm going to dip it into my white, like that. 
and I'm going to take it and just dot in the center of each one of these flower centers. So I say it, it'll take care of any of the white spaces that you see because I'm going to be doing the dotting so that will take care of it and not leave any kind of uh, a space open. You can do as little or as much as you want on the inside. It really doesn't matter. Alright, so I have that. And then, what I really like about this brush is that I can go like around this, around the center, just do some crazy, just free-spirited kind of um, little strokes here. If you want to go around the whole thing, you can. I'm just doing it like this, around part of it. Um, I don't know, just kind of giving it a different look than from a normal flower, but if you feel like it needs to go all the way around, that's fine. But I could look, I mean, just look how nicely. I just love this brush. I really do. I think it's very easy to use. I get nice looking centers for my flowers, or nice little, I don't know, vining, vine veins, however you want to whatever you want to call it, for my flowers. It just It's very easy to use. And I just thought, gosh, as long as it is and whatnot, it would be a real pain to use it. But it's really not. It's really quite easy. All right. And I'll keep, try to keep this on here so you can see it. And again, I'm just going partly up it. I'm not going all the way around it. And if you don't like that look, then go all the way around it. Certainly would be fine. This is just kind of a made-up flower, so it's not something that, you know, it's a certain flower. It's just a round brush or round brush flower. Something made up. So as many flowers are out there, you probably can find something that looks like this. Who knows? Or similar that it could fit into. I don't know. Alright, so again, if you like my flower painting, please make sure that you subscribe to my channel. Give me a big thumbs up and share this with your friends. And until the next video, I will see you then. And I do appreciate you stopping by tonight. Have a good one.